The following program is made possible by the partners and friends of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. You were created to be more than you are now, to love more than you love now, and to live a life that's fully alive. Take a few minutes and join Pastor Ronnie Phillips for a message of grace that will help you live fully alive. Wow, what an exciting two years it's been. Ronnie Phillips Ministries International really started from scratch and God has blessed us in such a tremendous way. We are taking the message of grace to the ends of the earth. We're doing missions around the world and we've been able to be a blessing to our city. Right here in Chattanooga and even Hickson, we've been able to be a blessing to our city. We have helped the homeless, we've helped young athletes, we've helped inner city parks, we've helped kids that need school supplies, families that need clothes, even their rent paid. So I'm proud of the great work we do in the area of missions. We've done things in Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, and we have tremendous plans to go to Uganda and Pakistan, and also to build a feeding center for children and feed 40 kids a week in Nicaragua. I already know how much it's going to cost. I know what God's called us to do and I believe we are well on our way. You know, Ronnie Phillips Ministries International is about the message of grace, first and foremost. We are committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ, to the grace message. It's about missions, and I've told you some of the humanitarian aid we've given around the world, the things that we do locally right here in Chattanooga. It's, but it's not only about missions, it's about media. We're on television locally and now in Knoxville, North Carolina. We have opportunities waiting on us in Arkansas and even around the world. And we're just waiting for God to bless us so that we can continue to touch the world like the ministries that flow out of this church have always done. We have a mandate to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And I wanna thank those of you who've helped me, those of you who rallied and got behind this cause early in my ministry. I believe you are first fruits, which puts you in alignment with Jesus. I can't thank you enough for the friends, family members, partners who believe in what we're doing. You make all the difference in the world and I'm blessed to lead Ronnie Phillips Ministries International and I'm blessed to be in covenant with you. We love you and we're excited about the future. But there are so many more of you that can help us. Uh, I promise you, it's good ground. We need you to help. Any amount per month will help us. We need you to become a partner. We need you to believe in what we're doing and rally behind this cause because the gospel is important. The grace message is important. Missions is important. And media is the only way to touch the world in this generation. And we need to be on every avenue we can possibly be on. And with your partnership and love, we can do it. We can do it together. Greetings, partners and friends. It's Pastor Ronnie Phillips, Jr., lead pastor of Ibis House and founder of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. Thank you for watching. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for partnering with us. We couldn't do this work without you. Today I'm going to be bringing you a message, Joy to the World. We're going to take that ancient old hymn, Joy to the World, and we're going to break it down bite by bite, and I'm going to show you how it relates to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're going to be blessed. I hope you'll enjoy this, and I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season. Jesus was born during a time of dysfunction and disunity. The nation of Israel was desperate for this joy I speak of this morning. They were desperate for fulfillment. They were desperate for hope. Maybe you're desperate for hope this morning. Joy is of a supernatural nature. It's not laughter. It's not emotion. It's a spiritual gift that comes on you from glory. And if you're going to have joy, you got to have the Holy Ghost. Joy is inward contentment in spite of all the other distractions and irregularities that we find. It doesn't have anything to do with your outward circumstances. Life may be falling to pieces all around you, but you can have joy 
Because that inner, inward contentment from the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with your outside circumstances. How many of you have ever been in the midst of misery and just had a laugh? You don't know where it came from. Things couldn't be going any worse and they're going so bad, just laughter comes on you. That's the Holy Spirit bringing you joy when you need it the most. Without joy, there can be no rejoicing when prodigals come home, when sinners come into God's house. There'll be no rejoicing when sheep return, no rejoicing when people are healed. Joy is the root of rejoice. You can't rejoice without joy. Paul couldn't rejoice in suffering without this supernatural gift. It's joy for the entire world. Trey Hartley read these verses about the Virgin Mary. said she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid. How will you know if you're in the midst of God's glory, you'll be afraid? Absolutely. That's what the word glory means. It's when God shines his light on you to the degree it radiates off you into the lives of other people, the Greek word doxa. One of my favorite Greek words, man. Because can't you just feel that and see that? The light of God shining on his creation, radiating off that creation into the lives of other people. That's what evangelism is. It's when God's light becomes our light and we let it shine. The angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold I bring you good tidings of what kind of joy? Let's say I give you just a little bit of joy like the world gives you. Great joy which will be to all people. For there is born to you in this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So I want to challenge you to do some things. Number one... Recognize the man of joy this Christmas. The innkeeper represents the business world. The innkeeper couldn't recognize Jesus as the man of joy or fulfillment of prophecy. King Herod wanted all the firstborn killed. He didn't recognize Jesus. The business world didn't recognize him. King Herod represents the political world. The political world didn't recognize Jesus. They didn't recognize this joy born of a virgin. The Bible says King Herod was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. I tell you, if you don't have joy, you're going to be troubled. It will affect every decision you make and everything you try to do. The word troubled means torn and insecure. How many of you have ever felt like that before? Torn and insecure. King Herod was. That's why he made a bad decision. It's because he was torn and insecure. He himself needed joy. The business world rejected Jesus as the man of joy. The political world rejected him as the man of joy. Religion wouldn't receive Jesus as the man of joy. Religion steals your joy and always wants to kill what it can't control. That's what the Bible says, Matthew chapter 2, verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. So the religious world missed it because it was of a charismatic nature. I don't understand the ongoing debate between charismatics and evangelicals. If you can believe a virgin gave birth, you're a charismatic. How 
How is that not weird? How is that not Holy Ghost? You believe a virgin give birth, but you're scared of someone praying in tongues? Really? Let me tell you what I'm learning about in the kingdom of God is that God never does anything normal. You have to have faith. And you have to see it before you walk in it. You have to speak it before it happens. You have to believe it. And if you don't, it will never happen for you. And if you're weird enough to believe God for the more, you're going to have the more. That's a kingdom principle. There is something to be said for those who can get a vision and walk it out. These wise men, three and a half years, it's not like your manger scene. They traveled, they believed. Christians today, we can't hold on to a belief for longer than 20 minutes. They had to hold on to that for three years. It's what God can do. So don't just receive the man of joy this Christmas. Release a majestic sound of joy this Christmas. Why don't you praise God again? Why don't you release that Psalm 98 praise to our God? Joy to the earth our Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ while fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains repeat the sounding joy. Let me tell you. If the earth can give praise to God, which it does, we ought to be able to give praise to God. If the rocks can cry out, why can't we? Amen? We to give God some praise. There's something to be said for a sound. King David was instructed as king to go into battle as soon as he heard the sound of marching. There's powerful riches in sounds. Many of you don't even think about sounds. What is God trying to say? What is God trying to do? What, how is God trying to speak to you in this season? It could be through a sound. Deep calling unto deep. The Bible says Ezekiel heard sounds of rushing waters. And we know on the day of Pentecost, when the suddenly came, there was a sound of what? A mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole house. Sound always comes before the joy. So why don't you release a majestic sound to God this season? Number three, I challenge you to realize the method of joy this Christmas. The method of joy this Christmas. The hymn says... No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, for as the curse is found. I go to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Your past has no effect on you now if the Spirit lives inside of you. Aren't you tired of the enemy using your past to keep you from being all that God has called you to be? That's not who you are. That's what you used to do. But it never was who you were, who you are, or who you were going to be. That's just what you did. So don't allow the enemy or a spirit of religion or a political spirit to keep you from walking in the fullness that's yours. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on an account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. That's what the birth of Jesus was about. It was about joy that would never end. It was about joy in the Holy Ghost. It was about joy that would keep you, sustain you, fill you, move you, shift you forevermore. Romans 14 would say, the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness 
peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That whole text that Paul wrote was to Jews and Gentiles arguing over religious Sabbaths, dietary things, and yes, alcohol. The Gentiles thought they were free in Christ so they could do whatever they want. They ate meat, they did whatever they wanted. They drank wine, they did what they wanted. Jewish people were looking down on the saved Gentiles and the Gentiles were judging the Jewish Christians. Paul gets in between them. And he says, let me tell you something, you're both wrong. Why? Because you're judging each other. If what you're doing, Gentile, offends someone that's religious, don't do it in front of them. But then he looks at the Jews and said, you're not spiritual either. You're missing the mark. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I'm in New York City with Kelly. I'm going to go ahead and confess this morning. I'm a mafia movie man. <coughs> Pastor Ron is too. Starting Thanksgiving, we're going to get through all the Godfathers before the new year. Every year. We've had to spiritually whack a few people over the years that weren't family. Somebody say amen. So my wife surprises me and takes me to, what's the name of it? I said it wrong 38 times. Il Cortil in Little Italy. Ah, man, I felt like a mafia guy. I had my black coat she bought me. You know, they're all yelling at each other. And I get my picture taken where James Gandolfini used to sit, man. It was awesome. It brought me joy. But when we get our picture made there... This is what the religious world has done to me. Now, we weren't drinking at all or anything like that. Don't start judging me. But I'm getting a picture. I have to take 15 pictures because there's this much of a wine bottle in the picture. I thought, oh, my God, a religious person will see that. I mean, we're so scared of what everybody thinks. You know, we're so, we're so legalistic and worried. And I don't want to ever be a stumbling block to somebody. But some of you, you ain't got no joy because you're too busy being offended. Amen. You're zooming in on pictures in, on Facebook to try to find fault with something somebody's doing. And if you had the real Holy Ghost, you'd be too concerned with your own mess than to judge everybody else. That's free. So what is the method of joy this Christmas? Don't be defined by the past. Forgive people. All this preach is good, but it's hard to live out. The Bible says we've got to forgive so that God will forgive us. We miss our harvest and inheritance if we choose to stay bitter. We've got to forgive people this season. Don't be defined by the past. Understand the realm in which we live. Stop repeating the same mistakes. Let me tell you, the reason some of you don't have freedom, you keep, you keep dating the same kind of people, hanging with the same kind of losers, going to the same places when God has a right place and a right time for you. You just have to walk in it. You know, you don't have to beat the bushes to find the open door. I've ne you have, it takes effort to miss the open door of God in the kingdom. It's a big, wide, open door. You ha you, 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 it's hard to miss it if you're being led by the Spirit, not the flesh. Repeat the sounding joy, not the same mistakes. Repeat the sounding joy, not the same mistakes. You're this close to your blessing. Somebody listen to me. This is for you. You're this close, but you're about to quit. Don't. You're this close. You know how many times in the kingdom I've seen people this close to their miracle, this close to their dream, this close to their promotion, and then they, they blow up and ruin it. Don't be that person. Repeat the sounding joy, not the same mistakes. Understand that blessings defeat curses every time. You were called to be a blessing, and you are blessed to be a blessing. Be generous. That is the method of joy. For those who live according to the flesh 
set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And I close here. Receive the miracle of joy this Christmas. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. He died for all of us. He could have stayed in glory, reigning over all, but he came to a manger in dirt form, was spit on, crucified, and mocked. And within three years of his ministry, he would go to the cross, but before he would say, let this cup pass. But Father, not my will, but yours be done. I'm telling you, he is the miracle of joy. Salvation is the miracle of joy. It is when God comes down and cares so much that he forgives you of all your sins, all your mess, gives you a new start, a new purpose, and a new beginning. All because of his grace, his unmerited, his undeserved favor. I tell you, the method of joy, let go of the past, Repeat the sounding joy, not the same mistakes, but spend some time in intimacy with the Father. Be thankful for the Son, for this miracle of joy named Jesus. I can remember one of our traditions growing up was my dad and I would make a Christmas Eve run. We haven't done that in a while. We probably need to renew that tradition this year. But here's what I knew about going with Dad on this Christmas Eve run. I learned it very early. My sisters taught me. They said, if you go with Mom shopping, she's on a budget. She's going to spend $120. And she won't go over that $120 with a pair of socks. But if you go with Dad, he wants to get in and out. So grab as much stuff as you can, <laughs> as quick as you can, and you'll get blessed. <laughs> so we started at about eight years old, making a Christmas Eve run. It was so fun because every, we'd be at Walmart or the mall or wherever it would be. We would buy last minute stuff. But I went because I always knew I was going to get extra stuff. And I was going to get to spend time with my dad. And I was going to get to experience gifts. You know, our Heavenly Father is the same way. Our Abba Father, he longs for intimacy with us. And Dr. Johnson went through all those gifts in Isaiah that we can have that are attainable. But we receive those and those are revealed through intimacy with the Father. So if you're going to receive the miracle of joy, it's about intimacy. He is Pele wonderful. He is counselor. He's mighty God. He's everlasting father. And he's prince of peace. That's who he is to us. That's what God has called us to see, to do. He's called us to joy. So I want you to receive this miracle of joy that the Father has for you this morning. You say, Pastor Ronnie, how do I receive this miracle of joy? The Bible makes it real simple. By accepting His Son as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, the gift of God, everybody say gift, yeah. is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead. You, my friend, shall be saved. And you will receive joy unspeakable, full of glory, from now until forevermore. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? 
Some of you need to receive the miracle of joy. His name is Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you need joy this Christmas season, it starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. You might be in your greatest fight with depression, like Isaac Watts who wrote this hymn. You might be still dealing with loss. You might be struggling in your marriage. You may be struggling in your finances. But I'm telling you, there's a miracle of joy for you. His name is Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords. All you have to do is accept Him. And that will start your process of recreation and reconciliation. Just pray this prayer with me if you need that miracle of joy this morning. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I receive your joy. I receive your joy. Come into my heart and save me. Come into my heart and save me. Fill me with your spirit. Use me for your glory. Oh, I tell you what, there is joy for every weary soul. There is joy for the world. That miracle child, Jesus, born in a manger, grew up and fulfilled every Hebrew prophecy. It changed humanity. It was a part of history. And if you accept Jesus, you'll be guaranteed for heaven. God is so good. That is the gospel of grace. And I am so excited about Jesus this Christmas season. Listen. I know many of you watch, you pray for us. Maybe you've never connected with our church or just or thought about becoming a partner. Listen, we want you to go to RonniePhillips.org. We want you to pray about becoming a monthly partner with us. Listen, it's almost the end of the year. So many of you have been blessed and you could help us take this gospel message to the ends of the earth. Listen, we have opportunities waiting on television stations around the world. We're just waiting on God and waiting on you. As God blesses you, we believe you can be a blessing back to the ministry. And if you'll do that, we promise we're going to do what's right with it. We're going to do missions. We're going to be consistent with the message of grace. And we're going to advance our media efforts around the world. We're just waiting on a few more soulmates to help us do what God's called us to do. Would you prayerfully consider being a partner with us before the end of the year? If God has moved you, I challenge you, partner with us 12 months. If God doesn't return back to you everything that you've sowed into us, even more than double, then all you have to do is just withdraw, and then we'll move on. But I know God will bless you for partnering with us. Thank you, those of you who already have. Those of you who all you can do is pray for us, thank you for that as well. We'll see you next time. Pastor Ronnie Phillips delivers help and hope around the world through missions, media, and the message of grace. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today and join us again next week for another message that will help you live free and fully alive.